It's hyphamen on hyphamen today. I got interested, well, I've been spending a lot of time with the Sesfara over the last year-ish, and I had gotten to spend some time back in the day with the HE-1000s, and I really liked them at the time, and then once I spent time with the Sesfara, I was just all Sesfara all the time. Um, but I had noticed some threads of conversation uh, on the Sesfara thread on, on, on HeadFi and some other places as well. Folks sort of commenting that like some people really preferring the HE-1000 V2 or SE over uh, the Sesfara. People who had spent a lot of time with this headphone and then sort of quote-unquote graduated up to the Sesfara and then quote-unquote downgraded back to that. So anyway, I wanted to um, get a little more head time with the HE-1000s and sort of see it, you know, kind of how these two stack up. Uh, is there an argument to be made for one over the other? Would you ever want to have both? Uh, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, Hyphamen is interesting in that they produce so many different open back planars at so many different price points, and some even in sort of competing price points. So you've got maybe like at the lowest tier, the four, the HE400i and the uh, maybe uh, Sundara, right? You know, those are like couple hundred bucks different, but still sort of kind of at the entry level to Hyphaman's open back planar. And then moving up, you've got like maybe Ananda's and HE6 and um, Edition XS. And then you've got like Araya and Edition X. And then you've got, you get to into the HE1Ks, you got the, the HE1000 V2, um, which there are a couple versions of. This is the um, 2.5 millimeter, so slightly older. Um, and then there's the SE, which is the kind of easier to drive version. And then uh, at the tippy top, you've got the Sesfara. So the, the, each price level of those like four or five price levels I described sort of doubles the one below it more or less, um, netting out in crazy town. Um, also still sort of in population crazy land. Um, anyway, let's talk about these guys first. So. Um, Make some room. Make some room. So uh, I love this headphone. I've, I'll put a link to my original review and thoughts on it. And going going back and visiting it after a while, uh, everything I I said before uh, still still rings true to me, at least um, in comparison. So in this video, really just looking at it in light of the Sesfara. In comparison to the Sesfara, um, just some some easy wins for this one right off the bat. Half the price. <laughs> You know, probably even less. Um, easier to drive, lighter, uh, overall a, a, a lighter headphone uh, to wear. Uh, these massive, massive ear cups, tons of tons of room in there. If you've got mega ears, you'll be there'll still be room for you. Um, and you know all the nice refinements of being, you know, high quality material. Still a very nice uh, headphone overall. The the build's not quite as nice as the Sesfara, but it's still, it's still a very nice headphone. Um, sort of in terms of sound, I'd, I'd consider this a, a little bit more forgiving. It's a little more fluid, uh, than the Sesfara. There's more emphasis here on like the mid bass. And I think that's one of the main reasons why people, um, uh, love this and still consider it a good companion to the Sesfara or something they can't let go of when they get the Sesfara is they miss uh, that that sort of richer, um, it's like, it's a bit lusher of a presentation, I guess I, I would say. Um, it, this headphone can get a little bit semblant, like not compared to really semblant headphones, but if we're comparing it against the Sesfara, it doesn't always quite control sort of splashy symbol stuff quite as well. Um, really a nit, but, but here we are. We're, we're nitpicking. Um, I think if you like pop, hip hop, electronic, um, sort of more producer, more bass heavy music, um, this is probably a little more fun to listen to that kind of music on than say this as far. Um, but the, I feel like these are just a little bit more chill, a little more easygoing, a little more fun, a little more playful of a headphone uh, than the Sesfara. But a lot of that comes down to driving the Sesfara correctly. And a lot of the comments, you know, that I see um, when people uh, don't like the Sesfara or complain about it or compare it negatively against the, the HUNK uh, come down to like it not being driven properly. And that is one of the major flaws of this headphone it is an absolute pain in the butt to drive properly and to drive in a way that um, takes advantage of what this headphone has to offer 
and also aligns it, of course, to your, your taste and sound preferences. Um, very, it's very particular and I haven't found any great cost cutting ways to do it. So it means spending more money on top of a very expensive headphone. So that's a, a bunch of huge negatives about this headphone, like right off the bat, <laughs> no way around it. Um, if we take money out of it for a minute, um, and, and just sort of think about how they compare from a sound standpoint, um, more controlled, more exacting for sure. Um, the space between elements is more defined. Um, everything just comes into focus when you, when you AB these things, like when you go back and forth, it's like totally in the groove, really loving it. And I put these on and it's like another level of like resolution and clarity just sort of jumps out at you. And, um, you know, sometimes the detail can be a little bit overwhelming, not like other headphones I've heard where it's just like trying to make a point of shoving the detail, uh, down your face. Um, but sometimes the, the detail, um, can be a little less relaxing, but I, I find it mostly that it's just all there and very open to you to sort of go out and collect the detail you're interested in at any given point when you're listening to these, which I find very rewarding. It's faster, more acceleration, more impact. The decay is way more expansive. Like things just run off into infinity. Like you can just, just listen to it forever with the proper DAC. Um, I mostly like the presentation and the, and the timbre of the Sisfara. Um, but like I said, occasionally, like it's a little too much detail, too much information and it sort of takes you out of the groove. Uh, if you enjoy like quieter, simpler music with less elements and you just want to hear a ton of detail and you want it presented in a really natural way, the Sisfara is just so hard to beat. Um, again, when properly driven, um, you just sink into the music and it just surrounds you. And like I said, it's got this great, uh, timbre that I think is re really, it's, it's hallmark. Like that's the thing that this headphone, uh, just, just kicks butt, um, about is like, it just, the presentation, it gives you all that sort of high end detail that you want in a very, uh, nice piece of gear but it doesn't do it in a way that feels sort of like overly produced or artificial. Um, yeah, it's just a bigger, more expansive listening experience. So to sum up, um, you know, if when properly driven for me, this as far as the clear performance winner and also more enjoyable for me to listen to more of the time, um, when it's not properly driven, like when I compared these on, uh, amps that weren't, you know, as successful in, uh, supporting this as far, they actually get a lot closer to each other. Um, and that's probably a lesson of like, if you're sitting here with an HE1K being like, huh, should I upgrade? It's like, well, what are you driving with? Are you going to upgrade the, your amp as well? It's a major factor. It's like, it's not just the price of this crazy headphone. It's the price of the chain that supports it. Um, but if you want something that's, you know, a little less demanding and the SE, which I've not gotten to hear, I'd love to hear the SE and love to have that in the mix as well. Um, the SE, uh, is like super easy to drive compared to either of these two. I mean, the, the HE1000 is not super easy to drive on its own. It's a relatively demanding headphone. Um, but much less demanding than the Sesfara get back on track. So if you want something that's, you know, less demanding, you want something that gives you like most of that high men open back flagship planar listening experience, um, at half the price, like, yes, this is a great headphone and I would absolutely be happy to have it and never hear this again. If that's, you know, what, what life had in store for me. Um, you know, it, it, if you like something that's maybe a little more forgiving, um, that like lets you groove a little bit more, that's a little less analytical. And, and this headphone is a detail monster. Like there's no, there's no doubt. If you go back and listen to, um, my original review of it, like the, I gush about the details. Um, but this guy's just even more, <laughs> it's just even more of those. Um, you know, if what I keep them both, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have both these in my collection. These were generously lent to me by Mr. Eric, uh, awesome YouTube channel. I'll link below. Um, would I have both? I wouldn't. They're not differentiated enough for me, honestly. Uh, I, if I want something to complement this as far, it's going to be in a very different space, like really lush, really dark, you know, just really uh, a, a very different listening experience, maybe close back, you know. Um, yeah, but I'm not, hey, if someone wants to own both, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying for me that that's probably not where I'd end up. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're on the fence going, oh, I love the HE1K, should I go up to the Sephora? Maybe yes, maybe no. Like I said, are you going to put the money into the chain? That's not a small investment. Do you want a bunch more detail? 
Do you care a lot about timbre? Um, those are the considerations for me uh, about whether it's a worthwhile upgrade path. Um, and like I said, as far as a complementary path, interesting, but probably just not differentiated enough for me personally. All right, y'all, uh, until next time, this is Seincraft, signing out.